What's up everybody? It's April Justine here with Designer Exotics and today I'm going to go over the feeding schedule that we use here for our short tails. Alright, so I wanted to make this really quick because our feeding schedule is really simple. It's kind of like we don't have a schedule. <laughs> Um, for babies, we try to feed them every week, and I say try because sometimes as babies they just don't get off to feeding. And if that's the case, I'm not going to assist feed them or force feed them for a very, very long time uh, unless I absolutely have to. Um, I just recently started assist feeding one of my Sumatran babies who was born in August, and I only got her feeding on a rat tail last week. So I wait a really long time um, because some animals just aren't gonna thrive. Period, end of story. But this one lasted as long as it did, so I thought, why not give it a shot with the cyst feeding? Um, but I won't do every week if they're not gonna eat every week. I will offer them food every week, but you know, if they don't eat it, they don't eat it. Then when they're about six to nine months, it might be every week that I feed them, every other week that I feed them, I kind of vary it um, because in the wild, really, they're not going to always have food, right? So I kind of take that into consideration. Now, mind you, I always go by body condition and if an animal is smaller or skinnier, then they'll get fed more often. If I have one that's really plump, then I'll feed it less often, but all animals are different, just like all humans are different. And our metabolisms are all different, just like them. And we know with short tails, their metabolism is extra slow, so we don't have to feed them a lot. A lot of people also get an animal that is maybe between a year and two years old that is super long, but kind of on the thin side. And what they'll do is just really pound feed these animals to get their weight back up. But really all that's doing is giving them more fat around all their organs and that's not going to help. So with the snake's body, they have all the muscle on the outside and on the inside is where they store their fat. They don't store the fat on the outside so it gets stored on the inside around all of their organs and that's just not good and that's not something we can see on the outside. So we might think that our animal has really you know, put on a lot of weight and is doing really well, but in reality, it's just fat and we don't know it and don't realize it and don't see it. So that's part of the reason why I do slow, consistent feedings. Um, I do smaller sized uh, food. So uh, my babies, I kind of try to push up the food until they get to smalls. Um, and that'll take possibly a year, year and a half for them to get onto smalls. And then they really take off from a year to two years I get them um, on the, the medium size, medium large size, uh, and then when they're two years and above, that's when they start going to the medium large larges, and I just stop at larges. All my adults only get larges, and that's because if you go beyond large rats, this is all rats by the way, if you go beyond large rats, they just have more fat in them, and so we're just feeding them fatty meats, and they don't really need that, right? So the lean large rat is plenty, um, and then, like I said before, with metabolism, sometimes you're going to feed them a little bit more if they're on the smaller side, or if an animal has a very fast metabolism and just doesn't seem to keep on weight, then you feed it a little bit more. And then if you have an animal that just gets really big, no matter what you do, you're going to feed it less. And so that's going to be up to you to figure out with your animals and observing your animals in your collection. So generally for us, um, like I said, babies get fed every week. Then when they go to six months to nine months, it's every week to every other week. When they are a year old, year to two years old, it's still gonna be every week to every other week. Um, and then when they go beyond that, the males generally get fed every month and, and then the females get fed every two weeks. And then once they're actually breeding, the males still, I take them out and feed them monthly. The females, I give a smaller meal, I offer them a smaller meal every single week until they start refusing and then I stop and that's normally when they start the uh, egg building process and they don't generally eat through that. Um, I go through and like I said with size is how I determine if I'm going to do a feeding schedule that is every week or every other week for my juveniles. 
So let me get one out that is a larger adult that I now put on, well, it's a larger juvenile <laughs> that I now have on a schedule for every other week, so hold on. All right, guys, so this is an example of a larger male that will now be on every other week. And as you can see, he's actually pretty, pretty big. <laughs> and he is probably going to get moved to every month soon and go on to his adult size housing. Um, so this is one of our 2017 matrix, and he's actually gonna be about three years old coming up this year, and so he will be moving on to our adult feeding schedule. His size is perfect. This is the size that I want for my males. Um, and yeah, so his feeding schedule gets extended. Now let me show you a smaller version that gets fed more often. All right, guys, so this is OJ, um, named for his orange head, orange-headed Sumatran short tail. And as you can see, he's a lot smaller, and he actually also is a 2017, but you can see um, his body type and the way he metabolizes food is a lot slower than the blood python that I just showed you. And so he is getting medium larges or mediums every two weeks, um, and sometimes I put in every week, it depends. Um, depends on how I feel <laughs> and um, he gets fed more often than the other one and so he will also not go into adult caging or have his adult size um, on him for a while and so I will keep feeding him a little bit more often and then as he gets bigger reduce that once he gets in his adult size he will then be reduced to once a month so this is the the size that I'm still feeding every two weeks and actually he's kind of skinny as you can see on there I need to get some more weight on him um, he's kind of a finicky eater, so I do what I can. Uh, but he's, you know, pretty good snake otherwise. Boop. So even though my feeding schedule or lack of feeding schedule is pretty sporadic, I do keep track of them. Um, you guys will see all the post-its that I have behind me. Um, that is my very basic way that I track, but I also have a Excel file and I'm making that available to you guys. So if you would like the exact tracking sheet that I use, um, or even just need something to start with and then you can make it your own. I will link that below. Just put in your email address and I'll send that straight to you. Um, but that's really all that there is to it. It's based on feel. It's based on your animal's behavior. It's based on their metabolism that you, that you notice and observe. Um, and it's not a, a set schedule. So if your animal doesn't eat every single week, that's okay, you know, unless it's losing weight. And it takes a lot for a blood python to lose weight. Do you have a big fat blood python that you're trying to put on a diet? Even any snake really, it's really hard to get them to lose weight. So I hope this was informative for you. If you have any questions for me um, and my collection, how I feed, what I feed, please uh, go ahead and put that below in the comments and I will get back to you guys as soon as I possibly can. I hope that all of your animals are happy and healthy. This finds you well and I will see you guys next time. All right. Bye.